So today's theme is defining dynamism amid global shocks. And there could be no more apt place to discuss dynamism than here in Saudi Arabia. The pace of change in the kingdom is dizzying, asserting global leadership from the Gulf, rocketing up the rankings for ease of doing business, leapfrogging the world's largest economies, embracing technological change, and transforming an economy fueled by oil into one powered by renewables, making Vision 2030 not just a vision, but a reality. That is true dynamism, embracing change and leading the charge. With your mega cities and giga projects, Saudi is not just adopting clean technologies, but pioneering them, delivering solutions that we'll, we will all be using in the future. So that's why the United Kingdom is proud to partner with you in a huge array of areas, such as financial services, clean energy, urban regeneration, academia, defense, sports, e-gaming, and many, many more. Truly a partnership for the future. But we do so in a world where shocks have become the new norm. We rightly refer to them as global shocks because their impact ripples from the epicenter right across our planet. The great financial crisis, the COVID pandemic, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, record temperatures and devastating natural disasters. And, of course, the brutal strike into the heart of Israel by Hamas terrorists just two weeks ago. The very worst of humanity. Thousands of people have died horrifically, unnecessarily. Tens of thousands more are injured or are in mourning. And millions are now living in fear of the consequences. This has caused untold misery and has led to deep, widespread insecurity. And we stand with all innocent victims of this conflict, urging respect for international humanitarian law and for parties to take every possible step to avoid harming civilians. And we welcome ongoing efforts to open up humanitarian access to Gaza. We have pledged millions in extra aid, and we remain fully committed to the two-state solution. Britain stands together to reject terror, hate, and prejudice, and to reset the path to peace and long-term stability. And as Deputy Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, the Prime Minister has tasked me personally to drive cross-government resilience towards shocks of all kinds, understanding the nature of the threats we face today and scanning the horizon to predict what threats we may face tomorrow. The first duty of every government is to protect their civilians. Of course, our first line of defense is always our armed forces. Those brave men and women are resilience personified. And the United Kingdom and Saudi Arabia have a proud partnership in security which stretches back into our history. Sharing intelligence, exchanging military hardware, training alongside one another, and continuing into the future with our world-leading typhoon jets. 
But increasingly, the ripples of recent global shocks reverberate in an economic sense, disrupting supply chains, driving up energy prices, and causing food shortages. And it is on this economic front where I am leading the UK's charge to be out in front in terms of our resilience, developing and retaining critical domestic capabilities, screening investment into UK companies, protecting government procurement from national security threats, and better understanding our supply chains. And as we scan the horizon, we see that rapid technological advancements will only make this task more urgent. And we've had a glimpse into this future, with cyber attacks bringing public services to a halt, ransomware wiping millions of companies' share prices. Banks have duped consumers, bots have interfered in elections, and intellectual property has been stolen from businesses and academic institutions. Now, so far, these have been relative skirmishes, wrought by an unholy alliance between hostile states and non-state actors. But with the enormous potential of artificial intelligence and quantum computing, there is a very real possibility that the world's next shock will be a tech shock. And so next week, the United Kingdom will be convening the world's leading nations and pioneering AI companies for the first global frontier AI safety summit. These emerging technologies represent exciting opportunities. They exist at the cutting edge of development, often yet to be commercialized and with unknown end applications. But we also know that hostile state actors are actively seeking these technologies for their own competitive advantage, or even to enhance their military capability. And the most valuable commodities to both businesses and nations are increasingly the source code, the technical designs or other intangible intellectual property that underpins innovation. And where they have a military or dual use application, traditional means of transferring, uh, controlling these transfers are often simply not enough. These intangible products can now be exported in a second, attached to an email, with no customs official to check any documentation, nor a list of multilaterally agreed product categories against which to check, because these technologies have only just been invented, often in small university spin-outs, rather than the established defense contractors used to working with government, and this dynamism in the tech sphere must be met with dynamism within government. Now, I know that dynamism and government are perhaps not two words that you often put together, but we cannot afford not to be. And that is why I am reviewing all our tools to ensure that they are fit for purpose, examining our export regimes control, to ensure that it's striking the right balance between uh, emerging technologies relevant to national security, exploring other paths through which this sensitive technology can leak out unchecked, such as through outbound investment flows, and working with academic institutions and startups to ensure they are alert to the risks and have the toolkit to protect themselves. And we need to build a policy environment that provides the private sector with the confidence to innovate, confidence to build partnerships, confidence to grow. Economic security should never be seen as a constraint on growth. It is an enabler of it. 
So just as allies work together on physical security, so we need to work together to build economic security. And the partnership between the United Kingdom and Saudi Arabia is a fine example of this collaboration. We made the Green Deal for finance last year, ensuring we protect our energy needs for the future. We've made an agreement on critical minerals this year, enhancing our collaboration in elements so vital to our prosperity and national security. And through to next year, I will personally be prioritizing building the bond between our two kingdoms. So today, I can announce that I will be leading a new strand of engagement with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to enhance our cooperation and mutually beneficial investment relationship, building on similar relationships across the Gulf. The partnership between our kingdoms has helped to shape the world we live in and will be a linchpin of shaping the future through to 2030. But just as important as the collaboration between nation states is the partnership between government and business. So I will be chairing a new public-private forum between government and business on economic security challenges with the first meetings later this year. And I want to be very clear to all of you that my door is always open to investors to discuss our economic security agenda. And our first task, when Prime Minister Rishi Sunak assumed office a year ago, was to restore that sense of predictability and stability that I know investors so cherish in the United Kingdom. Our task now is to drive growth, jobs, prosperity, and investment. And I know that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia will be a key partner in that mission. But we should also never underestimate how much our peace and stability and resilience to shocks are underpinned by our prosperity. A strong and growing economy doesn't just allow you to invest in your armed forces, it also allows you to deliver for your people. It is a signal to the world that you are a serious partner and a key player. Those who will succeed in this age of uncertainty as new economic powers vie for pole position are those with the fastest growing, most vibrant, dynamic economies. And those nations and those businesses will get to shape the new global order. And the UK is laser focused on that prosperity agenda. We are wide open for business, a world leader in climate solutions, life sciences, and creativity. A wonderful place to invest and innovate, and a partner with whom to seize technological opportunities. Happily, these areas where we excel are the areas where Saudi wants to grow. So your Vision 2030 is our vision too. We're by your side, with scores of fund managers flocking to Riyadh, and hundreds of UK businesses operating all across Saudi. And meanwhile, of course, London's global financial center remains committed to being the preferred hub for this part of the world. Thousands of Saudi students and tourists are in Britain, and Saudi investment is benefiting every corner of our country. That is all part of a deepening relationship with the wider GCC, the UK's seventh largest export market, and with whom we hope to increase trade still further through a free trade agreement. Geopolitical shifts are a great challenge to all our economies, but we can turn them into an opportunity to build a new world order based on rules, competition, open markets, innovation, 
and investment. Because that is the definition of dynamism, turning challenges into opportunities, not ignoring the threat of climate change, but seizing the opportunities we have to build a green future, not shunning artificial intelligence, but using it to solve some of the greatest problems we face, not turning inwards as new powers emerge and challenges arise, but forging new alliances and strengthening old ones. That is how we will withstand shocks, build resilience, and embrace opportunities for all our people. Thank you.